When they hear orthodontics, many people always think of beautiful straight teeth with a nice smile. On one hand, that is correct, but there's an even more important reason why orthodontics is so important. It is because we have teeth. In this chapter, we will talk about the interaction of teeth, of your jaws, of the joint, the muscles, well, everything all together with the whole body. You may be surprised now because many people, when they hear orthodontics, they always think of beautiful straight teeth with a nice smile. On one hand, that is correct, but there's an even more important reason why orthodontics is so important. Because we have teeth. Yeah, that sounds trivial, but it is true, because the teeth that we have are attached to the upper and to the lower jaw, and because the lower jaw is the only bone that can perform really major movements. And these movements of the jaw must not be disturbed by any teeth. If we would not have any teeth, everything would be much easier. Then there would not be any of those problems that we are going to talk about later. The parrot, for example, does not have any teeth and lives an easy life even without any teeth. And the leopard has these dangerous teeth, and so evolution shows that both is possible. You can see it here with these spe impressive specimens in the Natural History Museum in Berlin. And now, since we do have teeth, that is why we need orthodontics in several cases. Well, if the teeth do not fit together exactly, it can become really bad for some patients. Some people are sensitive and react to the smallest amount of malalignment. You can also feel the fly in the ointment, uh, you know what I mean. And others do not mind at all. And some people, on the other hand, can move their lower jaw around the most severely malaligned teeth and live without any signs of pathology. And for other people, this can lead to severe damage to the muscles and to the temporomandibular joint, and yes, also to their teeth. I, I don't want to persuade you now, but it may, we, may well be that um, these areas in your head have hurt you once in a while or are hurting all the time. This can be muscle pain, which comes from the balance and movements that your lower jaw has to do every time when you want to bite closely together because when your teeth are malpositioned, your jaw has to take a detour. It may be that you can cope with it for a longer time, but one day it can come to the point that it hurts you permanently. So when I tell you that the lower jaw can move against the upper jaw, it is accomplished by, by these muscles, which are attached to it. And if your jaw, in doing so, bumps into your teeth or gets stuck somewhere, then some of the related muscles can get sore and hurt. It may be a minor issue or it can become really, really bad. In those cases, the solution can be to correct the position of the teeth. And as a matter of fact, many muscles are grouped together by their surrounding fascia to large functional units. And therefore, pain may be spread towards the neck and to the shoulder or even further down. So it may have an impact on the entire body, which means from top to bottom. I already had experienced that myself, however, the other way around, from uh, bottom to top. It was at a congress when I was crossing the street, I knocked off my shoe heel on one of these tram rails, only on the right side though. Then I had to walk around in these shoes with different heights all week and long. My knees, my hips, my back, and even my shoulder did hurt. And there is another problem region, your temporomandibular joint. There may be malfunctions in any direction. As an example, I want to show you one of the most frequent malfunctions, the posterior forced bite. With some people, the teeth are positioned in such a way that the lower jaw is always forced backwards when they want to bite together. So here it becomes particularly clear. You can see how steep the upper incisors are standing here. If this patient would not have this tooth position, 
or would not have any teeth at all, then she would not always have to go that far backwards with her lower jaw when biting together. And then she would not have these problems, neither in the related muscles nor in her jaw joint. This lateral head film shows how steeply inclined the upper incisors force the lower jaw backwards and compress the jaw joint region. This, the, the uh, temporomandibular joint is a very tender joint and similarly complicated to what we know about the knee joint. And there you have also heard of some problems, haven't you? Now, let us have a closer look inside our jaw joint. The temporomandibular joint lies slightly in front of the entrance of your ear canal. Here, taken from our atlas, the face is a series of these incredibly beautiful exact anatomical pictures created by Karl Veska, based on a living model. So the jaw joint is still slightly covered by the parotid gland tissue, and taking away the covering structures, the capsule of the temporomandibular joint becomes visible. And here you can see the masseter, a muscle that is used to firmly press your teeth together. If you want, you can try it out. And you can feel at your cheeks how it becomes tight and firm. And when the masseter is partly removed, then you can see where the temporalis muscle is attached to the lower jaw and bite together again firmly. Here on your temple you can feel your temporalis muscle. This temporalis muscle with its large origin together with the masseter can produce 400 kilograms for some people that is 4,000 newtons of force. Maybe you have in mind these circus artists who swirl around on the trapeze holding each other only with their teeth and their chewing muscles. And finally we have arrived at the temporomandibular joint in here the capsule has been removed and you can see the relationship between the position of the teeth and the position of the joint head in its articular groove. The most important components of the temporomandibular joint are the groove, the articular disc, the head of the mandible and the muscles. And when you open your mouth widely, which means when the muscles pull the head of the mandible forward, then they really move for a large distance forward. And when you close your mouth again, then the elastic fibers in the back of the jaw joint have to pull back the disc again, all alone. There is no specific muscle for that. And if something is wrong right here, and if the fibers are worn out, and if the disc is somewhere else where it should not be, then our patients may have tempor temporomandibular joint problems. And only your dentist or your orthodontist can tell whether this is really bad in a particular case. This temporomandibular joint looks fine in the MRI imaging. And do you re recognize the structures again? Joint groove, cartilage disc, joint head, muscles, and elastic fibers. Your doctor could of course immediately recognize any pathology from such a picture. This treatment example, this orthodontic case, will certainly make it clear what I mean when I ask why orthodontics? When this patient wanted to bite firmly together, for example, when chewing salad, she had to pull her lower jaw far backwards. It worked well for her for some time, but then she came to us with sore muscles and pain in her temporomandibular joint. You can clearly see how steeply inclined the upper incisors are positioned and how far the lower jaw must be moved backwards to come behind them. And the lateral head film shows the situation clearly. The steeply inclined upper incisors, the posteriorly forced backward position of the lower jaw, and the head of the mandible in a far backward position. With splints that decouple the teeth from each other that alleviate a possible falls into the digitation, we check for a while whether the position of the lower jaw has changed and whether the complaints are getting better. Remember, if we had no teeth at all, we would not need to carry out any of such treatment. If it turns out to be necessary, there is no way to get around orthodontic treatment. We need to uprighten the incisors in the upper jaw, and then the lower jaw can come forward. And now all the teeth fit together properly. It looks nicer too, of course, but that's a side effect. 
of our treatment. When uh, everything is arranged physiologically correct, most people find it nicer. And the lateral head film now shows the upper incisors in a proper axial alignment and the way forward is now free for the lower jaw. The temporal mandibular joint is relieved and the symptoms are mostly better if the tissue damage was not too severe. And parallel to our treatment, the patients frequently undergo physiotherapeutic treatment. So why orthodontics? All parts of our masticatory system must function in a coordinated manner. In dentistry, in oral medicine and maxillofacial medicine, we can recognize functional disorders. And when all parts function physiologically correctly, this means when, when the teeth are correctly positioned on the dental arches and when the lower jaw is free during its movement and does not bump into any teeth in the way, and when the muscles with their neurological control work smoothly, and if the temporomandibular joint works in harmony, with its complicated internal structures, then you have a good chance that you will not have or will not get any malfunctions. We will have to talk about stress and grinding teeth and about bruxism another time. That is another big chapter.